what is going on world welcome back to Aquamalik in today's video we're going to be looking at how to prevent a pH crash so in yesterday's video we looked at what pH is and how it correlates to biology and organic chemistry and why it's important to our fish and uh, we talked about what you can do briefly on how to bring the pH up or down based on your individual circumstance naturally for the most part and uh, also the importance of maintaining a stable pH. Now in today's video we're going to be saying what we can do to prevent our pH from going to a level where it's completely unsafe for our fish which is a very big possibility if you are going to play with your tank pH you know and uh, now before we do that we're going to be looking at briefly what we can do to bring our pH up and down and uh, in turn how we can play with it a little bit Produced by Mali. To bring the pH up, it's quite easy. If you have soft water, let's say 6.5 out of your faucet and you want to keep African cichlids, all you have to do is have some type of uh, buffer in your tank like crushed corals or coral sand. Uh, I would not recommend pH buffers, which is uh, something that depletes really fast. Uh, crushed corals, just you know, put a bag of crushed corals in your filter or you know, at some place in your tank or add like a little bit of coral sand and it brings your pH up to about 8 to 8.5 and you don't have to worry about it for a very long time because until that coral, crushed coral is completely depleted it will continue to buffer your tank to that pH so that's how you can bring your pH up quite safely crushed corals okay the second thing is how can you bring your pH down let's say if your pH is above 8 what can you do to bring it down if your pH is about 8 to 8.5 I would recommend using something like RO or rainwater which are both quite safe to do and uh, you would have to do it very smart you would have to do it in small amounts you would have to measure your tank over the entire time you're doing this and you would have to also keep track of how much this changes your chemistry day by day and uh, so test with it a little bit play around and uh, you, it's a learning curve so you would have to do some uh, learning on your own I, I cannot give you values on this because each person's uh, water chemistry is a little bit different than others so what uh, other people do is they will mix either RO and tap water or for example Dr. Thomas 80% of his fish tanks are all pure rainwater like the other day he did I think 2500 liters of rainwater in all of his tanks so um, that's a lot of rainwater and uh, he has 50 tanks so pretty much 85% of the water in the tanks was replaced with pure rainwater now at that point your pH can easily crash and there are things you need to do to stop your pH from crashing and that's what we're going to be looking at next so what I like to do personally for my tanks to bring the pH down which is a natural method is, is to use oak leaves so you guys can see some right here and uh, there's one right there, there's a few actually in the back and catapa leaves are also really good and this works for people that have a pH of about 7.5 or a little bit lower, a little bit higher and uh, if your water is not too hard it's moderate then you can do something like this to bring your pH down to a, a level where it is more conducive for your fish to breed you can actually see these guys are right, getting ready to breed they were actually doing that all day today so I'm expecting a spawn out of these fish so stay tuned for that and subscribe if you haven't because I will be making a video about breeding these particular fish the Rhine Loricaria L0108 Red Lizard Catfish so they are getting ready to breed. The tank pH in here is about 7.4, 7.5. I did a large volume water change with pure tap water. And uh, so I brought the pH up from about 6.7 to about 7.4 for about two hours. And uh, the fish are fine, everything is great. But in the next couple of days, with this artificial means of oak leaves and things like that, my pH is gonna start going down. So in my tank, this tank for example, the pH will go to about 6.4, a little bit lower sometimes, uh, and it will stabilize at that point. And why is that? The reason for that in this particular tank and the reason these tanks don't crash for me is at least because I have a very large snail population. Now my snails are suffering at this point, not right now, but when the pH does go down to about 6 or 6.2, because their shells start depleting the calcium carbonate that is made up that the shell is made up of 
you can actually see some dead snails in here. These guys were eaten by my snails and stuff. Uh, there's shells all over the tank and all these shells buffer my pH as well as the large snails that are in the tank. I will actually put some close-ups of the snails that live in my zebra pleco tank. The trumpet snails, the Malaysian trumpet snails that have like a long body or a long shell, about a third of their shell at the bottom end is completely gone in, in my zebra pleco tank because they it's depleted. There's, you know, when the pH is 6.2 or whatever, there's no pH. To stop the pH crashing, the snail shells start depleting. So it is not healthy for the snails, you know, in that point, but it doesn't kill them. It makes it easy. It makes it easier for my playcos to eat them, you know, the ones they want to eat. So uh, it's a good situation for that particular tank. And I, I have been having these snails for a very long time. I haven't bought any snails in about 20 years. So all the snails in my fish room have been living with me for the last 20 plus years. Now, without getting too sidetracked, the snails buffer the pH and uh, in my case it helps me from having a pH crash where the pH goes to unsustainable level for my fish where my fish can die and, and pH crashes can kill your fish pH is below 5 can easily kill your fish uh, especially for a lot of these guys they're not designed to withstand pH of 4.5 4 and stuff and a lot of these animals will start melting and they will start dying so you really have to pay attention to this and if you are playing with this type of thing have a really good pH monitor, a pH test kit, as well as a probe that can uh, give you a digital readout is good. I'm actually looking at buying one for my Zebra Pleco tank. Uh, somebody in the UK told me about this today. It's really fun actually. I was really excited to see it. And uh, it really piqued my interest and I want to get one for my Zebra tank. So, you know, you guys could probably help me out with that actually. Uh, I'll let you know how in the upcoming videos. Now, uh, so the snails help with me. But if you don't want to keep snails, or if you don't have a sand bed and you want, you don't want to do that, you can also use shrimp soil. So ADA aqua soil is pretty good, not a paid advertisement. Uh, Tropica, uh, aqua solum or whatever it's called, I use that one. Uh, Brightwell has a really good soil. In Europe they have their own brands of soils. Uh, Jap Japanese brands are really good. Uh, most of the stuff is actually made in Japan and China, I believe. And uh, but they're, the Brightwell is made in the U.S., so if you are in the U.S. and you want to support your own local economy and buy United States manufactured products, buy Brightwell, not a paid advertisement. Um, <laughs> but I want to help, you know, like local economy is what makes us work, right? Or it keeps our economy running. I mean, if people don't buy locally produced goods, people don't buy my fish, it's not good. But yeah, for that purpose, uh, the shrimp soils and the planted tank substrates, or active substrates, work really well the only downside is you will have to replace them and uh, if you if they do get completely depleted then again you are running into the risk of crashes after that point so you have to stay on top of it and every six months to a year or to every two years depending on how hard your water is and how good the soil you're using is you have to replace it with new stuff okay so it's a little bit pricey but it is a good thing to do to stop a pH crash uh, another good thing is I mean crushed corals but then if you use crushed corals then your pH is not going to also go down to the points where you want your pH to go down to, to, to get your fish to breed. So this is something each person will have to figure out on their own setups based on their own water parameters and water chemistry. But for the purpose of this video we're going to try to keep it very simple. Uh, snails really do make a difference in your uh, tank pH and it also helps take up a lot of the hardness if you have let's say relatively moderate water like me having a large snail population especially if the snails have been in, in low pH water where the pH is maybe 6.4 no KH and you put new water with a lot of KH in it or a decent amount of KH the snails will take up a lot of that KH right away to rebuild their shells you know and so in turn the KH will get depleted really fast and your pH will be where you want it to be maybe 6.4, 6.5 6.2 whatever where it actually stabilizes at and in after that point the snail shells will start depleting and uh, releasing some KH back into the water to buffer your water now this is not an ideal place to keep your tanks if you're not if you are neglectful if you're like me and you have OCD and you're in here tech checking every single day even when I have a full-time job I'm in here like at least a half an hour when I come home from work checking and feeding and looking at everything and making sure everybody's good because these animals are like my children to me 
So in that context, it's not too much of an issue, but if you are going to be neglectful, I think it's better to actually go with uh, the shrimp soil or some type of uh, active substrate to actually prevent this from happening. Now aside from that, there's not much we can add to this uh, video. All I can say is it's better to keep your fish in stable pH, so if you have 6.5 water, pH water coming out of your tap and it stays at that pH, then great, you know. If you have 7.5 pH water coming out of your tap and you know it stays at that pH over time, then great. If you're not going to add things like oak leaves and stuff like that, then I don't think if you have 7.5 pH water, it will start crashing anytime soon unless you get neglectful for like six months and you don't do a water change, then things could get out of hand. But uh, if you are doing regular weekly maintenance, if you have 7.5 pH and you're not doing any of this other stuff, then you shouldn't worry about this, but still check your pH. But if you do have 6.5 pH, for example, the KH might be really low. And so you want to test and see where your actual pH stops at when you let the water sit for a couple of days. It might stop at 5.5, it might stop at 6. So at that point, you would have to add something like crushed corals into your tank to kind of stabilize a little bit or really stay on top of with your water changes by adding new water. You can add a little bit of remineralizing agent, some KH plus uh, to balance it out a little bit. Again, you would have to test religiously when you're doing that. Uh, adding snails will also help at that point. Large population of snails will definitely balance your pH and uh, buffer it. And uh, the snails will suffer a little bit, but if it's a very large population of snails and you are doing regular water changes, I don't seem to have any adverse effects on my snail populations. My snails don't die off. I mean, I have very large populations of snails in all my tanks and I don't have any issues and my pHs regularly go down to about 6.2, 6.3. So, it's not a big deal uh, as far as I can tell for the snails, but uh, it's something that I would say each person would have to do uh, very carefully based on their in individual setups and their individual experience level. And uh, always, always, always test and uh, it's always also good to have digital meters that are always in the tank so you can just look you know whatever but in my case where I have 50 tanks it's kind of unreasonable to have $250 deep digital meters in each tank that would cost me several I mean t tens of thousands of dollars to, to do all my fish room with meters so it's not feasible for me in that context so I use one of these I also use test strips to give me a daily idea of uh, where things are, especially when I'm doing tests and stuff. So that's a really good uh, alternative uh, to just keep a, keep check of things, but you always, always want to check with one of these or a better quality pH meter, uh, test pen or whatever, uh, digital pen, you know, whatever you have. And uh, so that's the bottom line of the video. I hope you guys learned something from this and I hope you guys checked out yesterday's video. We will be having some really cool content coming up. Uh, there is some uh, new videos we are planning. I don't want to spill the beans too much, but uh, we will have a promo code for, from Playco Ceramics, so you guys can buy Playcos directly from them. Uh, I'll update on that as I get more details. I am in contact with, uh, with uh, Playco Ceramics, and uh, we will be doing a partnership in that sense. That might help. Uh, and also, a lot of these fish from Playco Ceramics, like the L236, the L46 and stuff, and the L333 gold that they're breeding, uh, we'll be, you will be able to pick them up in Belgium or Holland or anywhere close to that. You will be able to, they will be able to deliver to you guys. And so I'll give you all that details in the coming video. So stay tuned for that. And as always, thank you so much for your love and support. I'll see you guys in the next video. God bless you all.